Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Generational Health with my beautiful co-host, Miss Whitney. How are you today? I am good. I'm good. What about yourself? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Before we get started, don't forget y'all like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I know that you're watching. We just want to hear you see you hit that uh, subscribe button. So I think we're going to uh, have a very, very good, we're gonna, it's going to be quick today. We're going to have a quick uh, discussion about the value of coaches and mentors. Mm -hmm. And uh, this topic came up because, you know, um, I'm going through some transitional periods right now. And the reason that I'm able to achieve some of the success that I've been achieving is because directly in correlation to some fantastic coaches and mentors. And uh, Ms. Whitney, uh, you've been doing the same thing and, and just seeing what the value of a mentor and a coach is. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, yes. Um, I actually, I think I was introduced to the, just the idea of coaching in a different way, maybe back in 20, I think 2017 or something like that when I was pregnant with my daughter. I'd heard about coaching uh, before, but like basketball coach, like, you know, like a sports coach, you're like, okay, well, they, they, they're out there on the field. They tell the players which plays to do. And then they, you know, when they don't do it well, they make them run laps. Like that, to me, that's what a coach was. I didn't know that there was something that existed beyond the athletic world of what coaching is. And then just kind of being introduced to coaching, um, and what a coach, the value of a coach could be in your life in a variety of different aspects. Um, it just really changed my perspective on having a coach and why that's important. And especially if you yourself, if you believe that you want to coach people, you should absolutely have a coach. Like you should have someone that's able to share, um, just kind of share with you in the process so that you understand and you learn how to share with others in the process of coaching as well. So um, I love it. I think it's very valuable. It's still a fairly new industry coaching. Um, in terms of it being like, you know, developed and all that, but tons of people are getting into coaching and seeing it as a viable career option, especially when they have a passion to really, really help people. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I've been doing coaching and mentoring in my inner circle for many, many years, you know, and I was actually uh, recognized in the mentorship, I think it was the Society of Mentors or something like that for mentoring young, young people. And so, you know, I really, really developed a passion for helping people to achieve their goals. And then, you know, I thought about it, okay, now, as you're mentoring other people, though, just like with therapists, as you're going through therapy, you know, it's a good idea that you experience it from the other side as well, because you never know what's going to come up. So um, in the mentoring and coaching world, I have a couple of great, great coaches right now and mentors right now. And the thing of it is, like you said, it's a relatively new um, concept to get a coach other than a football, a basketball player, a soccer player, a tennis player, or in sports. But if we think about it, all great players have a coach. So mm -hmm. why would we think that a coach wouldn't be necessary for us to achieve all of the things that we are, you know, looking to achieve in our lifetime. So I think having a coach, employing a, a mentor in your life, you know, it's just, it, it is like, I mean, I don't think that, <laughs> I don't think it's possible to be successful or as successful as you would want to be if you don't have somebody to help you plan out how to get there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also super valuable to have someone that not to just go blatantly hire a coach, like it's a process because a coach is, they're on an intimate journey with you in terms of like your dreams, your beliefs, your aspirations, your challenges, your struggles, and helping you to kind of see, essentially a coach doesn't just tell you what to do. A coach is like walking alongside you and helping reflect back to you some stuff that you probably don't see in yourself. Um, they're, they're a mirror really to help you. They ask questions really deep questions that, you know, most of the time you don't want to answer, but they <laughs> kind of <laughs> empower you, like we talked about before, to really dig into those spaces that you haven't explored yet to um, be able to get unstuck. Mm, that's a good word. Um, and we often get stuck, not only in our personal journey, but our professional journeys as well. So let's talk a little bit about our personal journeys. You know, I was just talking to Coach Whitney about, you know, um, my own 
struggles in actually, you know, staying active, you know, meaning, meaning staying physically active in, you know, and I love to work out. And it's just for me, I believe it's a it's a mindset thing, thinking that I don't have enough time to actually get it into a day. But I think um, I just think that um, you just brought out a great point, uh, Miss Whitney, mindset coaching, you know, having a coach to help you with that, because I think, again, we don't dig deep enough into what gets us stuck. Why do we get stuck? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think in terms of like what you were talking about, it's like we, um, I don't even know how to explain it. I kind of talked about it with our, I talked about it with our clients in one of our accountability calls of like how we try and do things in life. And we sometimes overestimate our capacity to do stuff. And it doesn't mean that we're incompetent or that we can't do things. We can't achieve goals. But I gave them the example of like, oh, let me see if I can remember. I gave them the example of like, how would you teach a child how to make a smoothie in a blender? Like yeah. you would have to literally go through step by step by step and teach them like how to put the stuff in, how to watch out their fingers so that they don't, you know, chop a finger off. Like don't start <laughs> the blender, like the ingredients, don't put the whole bag of strawberries in there, just put a couple of strawberries in there. Like how do you teach them how to make an entire smoothie with that processes? And a lot of times, we're on autopilot. And so we know how to make a smoothie. Just like drop the stuff in there, boom, hit blend, right? Yeah. But a lot of times in life, we overestimate our, our, our capacity or our competence in doing that with our other goals. And we're like, oh, I can just do this real quick. Or I can just go, you know, drop a few pounds real quick. Or I can just go do, I can just fit it into my life real quick, real easy. I don't have to like map out the parameters of what's required to do it. I don't have to figure out what my obstacles are. I don't have to set rewards in place to make sure I want to keep doing it. Like we don't do all that kind of stuff. And when we don't do that, we tend to not be able to do the goal or reach the goal. And it's like, no, we have to look at ourselves as the child that we're teaching how to create the smoothie and actually step back and say, okay, what do I really need in order to accomplish this goal? What do I really need to dig into? Like what ingredients are really required for success for me to do this and not just try and hurry up and do it by the way. And I think that's what coaches really help us do is to step back and get that true perspective of like, sometimes we can't ask ourselves those questions because we don't know where to start. And our coach then becomes us helping that kid make that smoothie by asking us those questions. Mm, I think that's really good. I think that's really good. And I think even if we go back to the, the parable of all great players having a coach, you know, the coaches push you to be even greater. And sometimes it's like, you know, um, I know when I was going through getting uh, doing uh, going through my personal training sessions and I would stop at a certain pain point, like, OK, wait a minute. But my coach would push me to go even further. I mean, not excruciating pain, but you know, you start feeling the soreness and you're like, I want to stop. Now, if my coach isn't there or my trainer isn't there, then I stop. But if my trainer is there, it's like, I can do one more. Oh no, you can do one more. Do one more. Oh, you can do one more. I know who you grew it. You can lift it. Now do one more, you know? So it's like your coach or your, or your mentor, or your trainer pushes you to even do more and to be even greater. And I think that's, the value of having a mentor or a coach and like you said sometimes they'll pull out things in you that you don't even know is there and you know um I know even you know being coached through my book it's smoothie time over my shoulder giving myself a shameless plug here but um in writing my book and going through coaching it was funny because I had a coaching team which is amazing they're you know just phenomenal and I remember uh Robbie Matthews who was, who was the designer who was helping me to design the book and you know initially I said you know hey I want fruit flying all over the place I just want juicy fruit flying and I want you know I want it to be mouth watering and I want juice fun. and those were all my creative ideas because I'm very creative and she said how about we put the smoothie in the glass and make it mouth watery from the glass perspective and I was thinking she was like what kind of glasses do you like so I still had input into the into the creativity of it but she made it make sense and then we came up with a with a with an amazing cover for a book so that's again a way the coach helps to guide you they don't tell you what to do but they guide you and guide your thoughts just like a um a potter with the clay they mold it 
and mold you. So, you know, I, and I think sometimes we think that we have to do everything on our own, but if you're just using your own frame of reference as your source or your guide, then you miss out on all the value that a coach or a mentor can bring to the table and bring to you. Oh, for sure. For sure. And they can do so. A, a great coach has the competence to be able to do it in a way that creates this like safe environment for you. It's mm. safe, but it's yes. not, it's, it's safe, but it's not um, safe, if that makes sense. Like the way that we see safety is like safety net ish of like, oh, okay. Like I need to not push beyond this border or beyond that. Like with your personal training example, like they, they will, push you or allow you to push yourself, give you the safe parameters to know, I'm not going to let you push yourself to injury, but I am going to make you push past your safety net of, oh, okay, this is hard right now. So I'm not going to give it. No, you literally have two more and you're not going to break your arm. So let's go. Let's see what you can do. What do you think you can do? <laughs> you know, like that, that they, voice yeah. <laughs> the that you bring, like, you like, you make the person think like, duh, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> exactly and that's I mean that's to me that's what a confident coach is I'm not here for that um I'm not here for coaches that haven't learned that yet and that just push you because they're working through their own um competence and pride and authority issues where they have to like push on you their beliefs and they have to like do stuff by force and no you're gonna do this like I'm not that like, that's not the kind of coach that I'm here for, but the ones that like ask you questions and like make you think about it in a way that's like, oh, I haven't thought about that before. Or, that's a new perspective. Let me go and consider that. And it doesn't even mean that you have to do what the, the coach essentially is insinuating. They're just trying to help you get to a place where you can make a decision about what it is that you're trying to do, even if it doesn't align with what the coach recommends. Like to me, that's a competent coach where they can be like, okay, Let's talk about this. Have you considered these options or what options have you considered? And you give those to me and like, I would, you know, I've tried this or that. And then the, the coachee decides, okay, well, I've thought about it. I've put things in place and this isn't what's best. This is what's best. This is the option I've chosen. And the coach can go, great job, you know, great job thinking through that and not, oh, you should have did this. Or like, you know, I'm going to tell you about yourself when that fails. Like, that's not, I don't know what that is. That's coercion. That is not coaching even bullying at some yeah. point um yeah. i had a coach this is a great example of an amazing amazing coach i had a um a three-day boot camp that i went through and it was boot camp y'all let me tell you it was boot camp but um one of the examples of one of the successful uh, uh, businesses that went through the program she was saying how she started a business with her sister and i thought this was an amazing heart heartstring pulling uh, story. She said that she, um, her sister wanted to retire from her nine to five. And the one sister that was able to work their business full time, kept working the business full time. But she kept saying um, in her business plan, she paid her sister half because her sister contributed, but her sister wasn't able to be there all the time. So when she hired a coach, the coach was telling her, this doesn't make sense from a from a from a business perspective that she's not contributing 50 percent, but you're paying her 50 percent. And she said, well, this is how we started out. This is what our agreement is. So I'm going to keep paying her 50 percent. And she said the business just kept growing and kept getting bigger and revenue kept coming in. And she didn't stop paying her sister the 50 percent. And she said so she kept going. And eventually her sister was like, wait a minute we're making this kind of money. And she said, I told you, come on over. You can retire now. You can stop working now. And she said that, and the coach was like, even though it was against my better judgment or my coaching for her, she took the coaching and she still made the business a success. And But she kept her own personal beliefs, thoughts, convictions in there until she was able to pull her sister in full time. And she said, now the business just went through the roof. But she never um, condemned her for not taking her advice. She get, just gave her, as a coach, she gave her the best sound advice that she had, but she allowed her the space and not say, you know, okay, if you don't take my advice, I'm not going to coach you any longer. No, she gave her the space to pull out what she extract, what she needed and yeah. to continue with her business model. And it turned out to be, and that's what I always talk about. I talk about integrity and I talk about, you know, um, honoring your word and all of that. 
and honesty and and and, and that because that um that makes a huge difference huge difference if you model your business by that and that was a good example of her modeling her business by okay, these are my principles and i understand what the business plan looks like but i also understand what my word is and, and so now they have a very successful business together yeah that's good that, that i had pulled something up before we got here about like what coaching is and that aligns perfectly because it talks about how in coaching we see the clients as the experts on their own lives and the coach's job is to listen make observations, ask powerful questions, and just hold a mirror up to the client so that they can see what they may not see in themselves. So that part about we see clients as experts in their own lives. We can give our feedback um, and ask questions and all that good stuff. But just like that coach did, it's like, no, okay, you're the expert in your life. This is the decision you've made based off of your value. We're going to roll with it. Yeah. We're going to roll with it. And I thought that was just beautiful. But that's, that's what we're talking about, the different examples of you know, of, of, of coaches. And sometimes, you know, well, not sometimes, but all the time, we have to realize that we have the power and we're interviewing people to work with us. We're not, everybody doesn't have um, just carte blanche, if you will. Everybody doesn't just have, you know, open doors to be in that part of your circle. And so when you're choosing a coach or, you know, I think sometimes we give our power away because we don't realize what a, um, we don't realize what, that we do have the power to make the choice or the selection. Now they may be the expert and sometimes we get intimidated by their expertise in their field, but it's for us to take that information and utilize it to make the best choice for what fits well with us because everybody can't coach everybody else. Everybody's personality and spirit doesn't match or mix. So, you know, um, what we had, we, we just wanted to come on today and just give a quick overview about the importance of coaching and, you know, how coaching has actually, you know, uh, made a difference and touched our um, and touched our lives. So it's it's just you know it's it's, it's been a I mean it's been quick, <laughs> but um, I know we have some interference going on on your side. Thank you very much. Are you still having the interference, or are you able to come on and uh, and give your final thoughts for today? It's kind of going in and out. Actually, where I live, it's right next to a fire <laughs> department, so it's like. <laughs> getting louder and louder there you hear it there it is it's yep. okay <laughs> it's okay yes that's uh, another point that's another point in coaching it's like sometimes we feel like we have to be perfect in every no we don't we just have to be how about that yeah absolutely just be for sure for sure i think my only feedback um, would be, I guess, if you've been considering getting a coach or hiring a coach, just make sure that you are looking at a couple of things, like look at what they have out there in terms of what they value, what they believe, and um, make sure that it aligns with what you value and what you believe. Because if you get with a coach that does not have those same values and belief system, it's going to be very challenging for you to not only receive from them, but for them to give to you because it doesn't it doesn't me- mesh like it's not aligned in a way that will allow the process to be seamless and fluid. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think those are those are some very good tips because, you know, I think we um, I've had someone ask me about, you know, how effective has coaching been in my life and then, you know, mentors and coaching. Um, my answer is always you have to make sure that that is a person that you can receive from a person that respects your voice, respects your expertise, but can coach you and mold you into, you know, your purpose and actually listens to what your purpose is. And so, you know, I think it's a, again, the best thing that you can do is to get a coach or a mentor because none of us know it all. We don't have all the answers. And so, you know, but that's pretty much what I had to say for today about coaches and mentors. I think they're amazing. And I love that the industry is growing. So it just gives us, you know, more, uh, more of a base to pick from so that we can actually, you know, and the thing about this successful people, they have an accountant or a financial advisor, they have an attorney, they have, um, I mean, shoot, some of them have nannies. So, you know, a driver, uh, you know, to help you manage all of this. So don't be so down on yourself, ladies. If you if you feel like you need a little bit of help, a little bit of help is great because we don't have to be expertise in everything. We just have to know how to grab the experts to help us get there. How about that? Absolutely. Totally agree. 
<laughs> well, all right then. Until next time, make sure you all like, share, and subscribe. Share this information with somebody else. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget, stay fearless. And bye for now. I lost my mouse. <laughs> bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>